Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about everything that's happening in and around Missoula, Montana, and the United States today. Uh, I got my coffee. We're all good to go. I got uh, four people waiting in the wings to uh, uh, be interviewed about uh, um, Child Abuse Awareness Month and also uh, Diversity Day, which is happening this Saturday. So I'll get them on in a short little bit. But of course, if you guys are planning on going out and about today, Earlier today, right now, would probably be the best time to go out and about because tonight you can expect rain showers to be happening to the 50 to 80 percentile. Um, your high is going to be 53. Your low is going to be 35. Thursday, you're going to have the, some of that rain-snow mixtures again. <laughs> Montana spring, what are you, you going to do? Uh, so you have Thursday night, it's going to be 50, 40 percent chance. Thursday, 90 percent chance of rain and snow mixtures with highs in the 43. So uh, yeah, Friday, um, you can expect some mix rain showers but then by Saturday things are going to start warming up and it's going to be mostly cloudy some sun will start hopefully peeking out by Sunday I'll get more on that later on my Friday show so let's talk about some things that are happening in the news uh, a bear um, has made his home in a hole in a cottonwood tree at a glacier and the internet is a blaze is at a blaze I guess um, because um, they put a live stream cam camera on there and I have a, a basically live feed of the bear, and here he is. Here's the bear. Here's the bear from live um, in Glacier National Park. Yeah, that's basically all he's been doing. Literally just sitting there. Like he just got out of hibernation and basically he's been living in that tree. Um, <laughs> so um, our very own Ron Scholl here has uh, basically uh, been able to get a couple um, screenshots of a day in the life of a basic bear. <laughs> So here's the bear. He's looking at the thing. Okay, now he's thinking about maybe getting out of his stump. Okay, he's stretching a little bit. He's he's looking around. Okay, he yawns. Gets out of the tree. Gets on the branches, kind of looks around. Nothing much going on there. And then proceeds to go back into his tree to get comfortable and just hang out, stretch his leg, and just lay there for another hour or two. There's the life of <laughs> the Glacier National Park bear. And there's not much going on there, you know. Maybe I'll check in the live stream later today, but other than that, he's basically been kind of pruning himself and getting himself kind of prepared. I don't know why I'm referring to him as a him, but yeah, he's basically kind of washing his face, maybe, you know, opening the stump just a little bit, but you know. People are watching this, and currently uh, 518 people are currently watching this live, um, including myself. So I'll get more on that a little bit later. And speaking of social media and uh, things that are happening ablaze on the internet, I guess I'm going to use that phrase from now on. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, founder and chair of Facebook, came before the Senate about personal privacy and regardless of how we go online, that we remain private citizens and cannot let these companies use, use in users' information. On the other hand, you can always argue that we still simply let our personal information get out there in the first place. But the political tactics taking place are an issue uh, on, in how Facebook slash other media companies use data without letting the users know that they use their data to basically sell them crap. Um, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, but um, um, Mark Zuckerberg said, we didn't take a broad enough view. We're going to take a broad enough view on how to solve this issue. So. Mark Zuckerberg apologized to anyone who has misinterpreted what Facebook has provided through information. Many of Zuckerberg's said mentioned in his opening statement on how people have connected and helped people in need and allow small businesses to grow in its most recent landscape. Uh, 2017 was its big profit year for um, when it, Facebook basically started selling ads and basically used user data depending on what you click on on Facebook. They basically took that data and found a way to use it to sell you specific things. So basically it's a marketing ploy and a lot of people on the Senate and a lot of people um, are kind of don't like the idea of your personal information being used to sell you stuff. So anyways, that's kind of what they were talking about there. Um, you basically can watch the Senate hearing in all its glory by basically Googling Mark Zuckerberg because that was the biggest thing that was happening um, the other day. So check that out on more. Um, I don't want to keep my guests waiting. So here's an art clip. And when I come back, I got uh, uh, two girls, uh, two ladies from um, Diversity Day from Empower Montana talking about Diversity Day coming up this Saturday. 
Just give it a minute. Oh well, I guess I'll just play it from here. 19 Nathan here, on my own in the Montana wild. I'm used to having my best mate Liam behind the camera, but he said he was rather tired of getting chased by bears. The show must go on. Set up quite nice, really. Stuff from a lovely fish dinner. And I've got my bear spray. Oh well, I should be fine for the evening. When adventuring in bear country, remember, hike in groups. Bring bear spray and know how to use it. Make noise and don't run. Be bear aware. Hey, how, how, hey, how's it going over? Uh, uh, oh, have a good day. <laughs> oh, huh, I didn't see you over there. What a nice day to be out and about today. But I want to tell you something about what's going on here. Hold on a second. Let me just adjust this. Uh, okay, there you go. Let me talk about MCAT. MCAT is doing Saturday drop-ins starting every Saturday this fall, winter, and spring season from 1 to 5 p.m. Let's go check it out. Come on. MCAT is a great way to create. All you got to do is come on down to our location at 5 Lincoln North Higgins. It's as easy as that. See you there. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm here with uh, Kayla and Claire, and you guys are here to talk about Diverse City or Diversity Day happening on Saturday at the Missoula Art Museum from six to eight p.m. That's basically uh, it in a nutshell. But what can people? What are what are people? Sh what should people know about Diversity Day? Yeah, so this year Diversity Day um, is going to be a little bit different. We are in the Missoula Arts Museum and we're super excited about that. We're going to be having our main event going on in their main gallery. It's going to be really uh, um, just a really fun setting and it's going to be a little bit shorter this year which um, we're going to pack in some really great material. We're going to have our young people from our epic after school clubs sharing their spring projects and then we are also going to have a reading um, from different adults in the community and they are going to be sharing um, either things that they had written when they were younger journal entries poetry etc and kind of reflecting on it or just sharing about um, what they think um, their youth self would think of the world today. What's the importance of Diversity Day to you? Well, I think there's a lot of different importance, right? So Diversity Day was started because um, Empower Montana and our After School Club's EPIC were really instrumental in helping pass the non-discrimination ordinance which means that if you um, identify as lesbian, gay, um, trans, gender, queer, bisexual, um, or any of that kind of um, LGBTQ soup that you can't be fired or you can't be refused housing um, for your um, sexual or gender identity. So I think celebrating that is huge, but also celebrating the rest of our diversity in our city um, is also really important. And it's important for our young kids and our young people to get excited about this and know what's happening. So how long has this event been going on? This will be our ninth wow. year. Wow. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not quite our 10th anniversary. Because you guys were at the Senior Center for mm -hmm. a couple of years, quite a, a bit mm -hmm. of time. I remember you guys did one at the Roxy. I don't know if it was Diversity Day, but you did an event yeah. celebrating the passing of the ordinance. Yep, we did, and the very first year, actually, of Diversity Day, we had a huge rally at Karis Park. Um, we had a diff bunch of different speakers. Mayor Engen spoke and read the proclamation, which um, stated that Diversity Day would be an annual celebration. So, yeah. Yep, you do it every, uh, I think it's like second or third Saturday in April. Mm -hmm. um, and basically try to bring a lot of people together. You have a lot of guest speakers. I remember mm -hmm. I've filmed a couple of the Diversity Day things. Uh, definitely one of my favorite ones was uh, when you brought um, uh, a Native American uh, guy, rapper. Superman? Superman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised I didn't remember that name because it's such a very, it, he was amazing. He did a really good job. He cracked jokes. It was just an overall positive experience. So, and, of course, uh, one other year you had another person who was uh, wheelchair-bound 
who basically never let that stop him from living his life. And I think that was a really good positive message. So what kind of positive messages do you guys hope to convey in this diversity day this Saturday? Yeah, so this year is really about connecting with the youth experience. Um, I think oftentimes we shut down young people's um, just hardships and just kind of chalk it up to hormones and oh, just wait till you are an adult, it's even harder then. That's really invalidating and so we really want to remind our adults um, what it's like to be a young person and also really empower our young people today to feel supported yeah. and um, excited about making change in Missoula. Yep, and it's even more important now, even now, more days especially. So is there anything else you guys want to say? Anything else you want to add, Kayla? Um, you know, I think Claire beautifully covered it. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks. Oh, for doing and oh. these are super cool T-shirts that will be on sale at the event. Cool. So yeah. we're excited. So uh, if you want to learn more information, I'll just pop up their website real quick: um, EmpowerMontana.org for more information. Right here, you can go here, find more information, more upcoming events, how you can volunteer, how you can donate to Empower Montana all sorts of wonderful things on this wonderful website. And just once again, I want to thank you guys for joining me and I want to tell everyone out there that the event is happening this Saturday, April 14th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Missoula Art Museum. Yep, yep. great. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, thanks, and I will be back with more guests, so stay with me. Sergeant Greg Amundsen with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about bicycles riding on the sidewalks in the city of Missoula, which we see a lot because Missoula is a very bike-friendly town. I would just like to let bicyclists know that they do have to yield to pedestrians on the sidewalk safely because they travel faster than a pedestrian, so they do have to do that in a safe manner. And then when you get to a crosswalk, you are actually required to slow your bicycle down to what would be called a pedestrian pace, and you cannot begin crossing until it's safe to do so. Your smartphone can help you find a bar, alert your friends that you're in the bar, update you on your team while you're at the bar, and now, let you know you need a ride home from the bar. Hmm, that is smart. Download blood alcohol calculators for your phone at plantolive.mt.gov. Hey guys, we're back here with Leah Fitch and Anna Simple. And you guys are here to, with the Missoula Forum for Children and Youth, and you're here with Healthy Start. Mm -hmm. Healthy Start Kids, Healthy Start... Healthy Start Missoula. Healthy Start Missoula, yeah. okay. Well, you guys are here to talk about uh, Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month here in um, Missoula. Mm -hmm. And one of the events that are happening, many events that are happening, mm -hmm. of course, the biggest event that's happening is the one that's at the Double Tree next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Also, you're offering free rides and... Um, an event at the carousel on Tuesday night as well. But that's just kind of like a flyover. You guys, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> happening. And let's kind of kick it off with uh, what what is uh, Missoula Forum for Children and Youth? Yeah. Oh, well, Missoula Forum for Children and Youth is a program at the Missoula City County Health Department. Um, and we primarily do uh, prevention. And so part of that is um, we have an early childhood um, a coalition that Anna runs is called Healthy Start. Mm -hmm. And so that's really the, um, the events that we're talking about today. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So uh, what are some of the events that uh, people can engage with? Yeah, we have two big events coming up next week, all part of our State of the Young Child series, I guess. Um, so on Tuesday from 4 to 5.30 on the 17th, all families are welcome to come to the carousel and have free rides. We should have Clifford the dog coming around from our um, local Educators for Young Children chapter and um, just a good time in general. Uh, last time, last year we had about 100 people come through and it looks like we should have that again. You can have as many rides as you want. Um, and then after that, on Wednesday, we will have more of a professional track. We have a couple of trainings for childcare providers or anyone who works with children. And then a dinner that honors our early childhood champions, um, anyone who has made a difference in early, young children's lives. So childcare providers, again, um, 
any social service providers. Um, parents are welcome to come too. Um, that one isn't free. It does cost $25 for the dinner, but we have scholarships for child care providers that might want to come. Um, we will be honoring two different early childhood champions. We have Julie Bullard from the University of Montana who oh. is retiring this year and has just done amazing work across the state writing books, um, advocate or you know doing policy work at the state level and um, really looking at making early childhood profession a little more elevated and a little bit more um, organized in the state she's she's just great um, and then Lolo preschool has also done a great job they have achieved star level four which is a hard job to do there's five stars possible and they're right up there at four um, and they also are taking part in the governor's stars preschool program which is um, a pilot program that is funded by the state um, to help serve some you know higher needs kids and and really help support them so they're partnering with Lolo Elementary School and that's not an easy thing to jump into a pilot program so we really want to honor them um, and then we'll be learning a little bit about self-care it's been a hard year for early childhood and a lot of different services in general just budget wise and changes that have gone on and so really talking about how much we value the work that people have done um, honor that hard work and then just take a little time to think about how we can take care of ourselves so we can continue working in a really challenging field. Yeah. What is the importance of prevention, Leah? Oh, goodness. Well, <laughs> that is a big question, Scott. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't have to solve the world's problems in one question. Sure, yeah. Um, I think that one of the reasons that we do prevention and um, what, why so many people that we work with do um, is because that we see um, the huge benefit for our children later on. And I think especially within early childhood, I think that it, I think there's an actual like, it's it might be four to one, like for, so with, with every dollar that you um, um, actually invest in early childhood, um, then you're actually saving, I think $4? later on so um, so just looking at like um, how can we help uh, children have great childhoods right. um, early on mm -hmm. and that way the, um, that that they're going to be healthy happy uh, people later cool so, and yeah. uh, the forum also works with many other organizations that yes. helps these kids as well yes. do you uh, uh, do you want to mention any other organizations sure. that you guys work with? Yeah, yeah. So we have a few different coalitions. Uh, we have several community partners. Uh, one of our big coalitions that we uh, also have is the uh, Missoula Underage Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition as well. Um, we also do quite a bit in terms of um, trying to um, prevent uh, prescription uh, drug misuse and abuse. Um, and then uh, we're actually having an event later on this month too where we're doing a prescription drug take back on the 28th um, as well. Um, yeah, so, and we work quite a bit also with the parenting right. place as well. So, in our, um, yeah, yeah, we have, there's a lot of partners. Mm -hmm. Really, to put State of the Young Child on, we need all of our partners. Yeah. So, it's sponsored by Child Care Resources, um, Missoula Educators for Young Children. We have uh, funding from the Children's Trust Fund and the Preschool Development Grant um, through state grants. And then, you know, Early Head Start, um, Growing Up Green, let's see, Child Development Center, they are all on our committee that really have put this together. So without the work that all of them have done, um, we wouldn't, this wouldn't be happening. Cool. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's happening is happening next week on Wednesday and Tuesday, mm -hmm. free carousel rides, easy, just stop on by between 4 and 5.30. Mm -hmm. And then of course the Doubletree Hotel, 6 p.m. Yeah, for the dinner and just check out our website. We've got, you know, different trainings and events going on all day long. So HealthyStartMissoula.org. Um, right there in the middle, you have that happy superhero kid. You can click on that and you'll find out all of the times and other information. Yeah, so okay. a nice little uh, events going on here. Say the young child, <coughs> put your information down here. Mm -hmm. uh, RSVP, mm -hmm. right? Yep, yep. If you want food, you, you better let us know you're coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, guys. Is there yeah, anything so else you want to mention? No. Yeah. All right, thanks guys. Yeah. Um, we'll be right back with more show right after this. Thanks. Senior Corps at Missoula Aging Services is Missoula's volunteer hub. Hundreds of volunteer opportunities await. You can help improve reading skills, school attendance, and the well-being of students, provide services that help older adults, or find out about countless other opportunities that will capture your interest. Because your heart's desire never ages, now is the time to reinvent yourself. Discover your perfect volunteer opportunity by calling 728-7682.
Sergeant Greg Amos with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about something I see downtown routinely and that is pedestrians crossing against the pedestrian heads. So I'd just like to explain what is actually legal. You cannot begin crossing in the crosswalk when it's either flashing and in the countdown or solid red. The only time it's legal to begin crossing in that crosswalk is when the white crossing sign is displayed. The, what the countdown is for and the only thing that that's there for is to tell you how much time you have to finish crossing the street, presuming that you started when it was legal to do so. Access Television and the many supporters of uh, community programming, we wouldn't be able to do that. So thanks, MCAT. Happy birthday. Lovely to see you all. And we'll see you on Monday night. So again, thank you, MCAT, for all that you do for this community. And we look forward to another uh, three decades. And congratulations on MCAT for 27 years. And let's keep it going for many, many more. So again, congratulations to MCAT on 27 years of service to the community. We're hoping for many, many, many more. So we're so grateful. Thank you, MCAT. Love you guys. And nobody does a better job of informing, empowering, and engaging people than MCAT. So happy birthday, MCAT. More money in Thailand um, but if they go many times um, they experience really negative outcomes so either they experience you know sexual assault or um, come back with sexually transmitted diseases is often a really common outcome um, and so they they're able to make a lot more income for their families which is wonderful but a lot of times um, the outcome for them is not great socially um, and physically and so um, the Mon Women's Organization works to educate them before they go. And one of the things that happened at that time was is that the pharmaceutical companies had a fit. And the pharmaceutical companies negotiated with Washington to the point where Washington said in Medicare Part D that we will not negotiate on price with Big Pharma. That we will, we will take the sticker price for everything. And that, that, the, the ramifications of that are unbelievable, but it's a, it, it turns out it's very expensive drugs. And, um, and then in the Obama administration, in, in, the, um, in the Affordable Care Act, renewed the sunset. They put a five-year sunset on it. And, and, and the Affordable Care Act renewed the provision that we, the largest purchaser of pharmaceuticals in the world, doesn't negotiate on price. So what Mark says makes sense, and that's the way it should be, it hasn't turned out to always be that way. And of course, those are some of the programs that you can watch on MCAT that are happening for the next uh, couple days. I'll have a bunch of more programs happening for your weekend this Friday as well. But yeah, I just want to thank all my guests for showing up today. Um, I watch City Council, and all I got to say is that... Um, there's not much going on with city council. There's some rezoning stuff here and there, and I think there's a whole new religion based on dream catchers. You should check it out. Um, but let's go check in with our live Glacier National Park bear cam. Yeah, there's that bear just sitting there. Oh, yeah. He's, he definitely is not waking up anytime soon. <laughs> he wakes up to readjust, then he goes back to sleep. So we'll have bear watch happening pretty much all week long, as long as the bear is still there, and as long as Glacier National Park keeps on putting it on live streaming on YouTube. So Glacier National Park, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, let's talk about uh, some things that are happening. Uh, I just want to give a couple shout-outs to MCAT. MCAT.org is your local resources for everything MCAT. If you want any services, MCAT is doing some summer camp registration. Um, if you ha uh, have a kid or uh, <laughs> know of somebody who has a kid um, and would want to do some media arts and make some movies and make some fun short videos, you can go to our summer camps. Our summer camps happening in 
last week in June, pretty much all of July. None of it is happening in August, so we're going to have a thick three weeks of summer camps in July. We have four camps offering the four... Oh, geez. The four camps that we're offering, let me get through this before I die. Um, the four camps that we're offering is Animation Camp, Time Travelers Camp, and Zombie Camp. Two of them are pretty self-explanatory. The Time Traveling Camp is a new camp that we're doing in partnership with Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. Think about it, stories and stones, but with kids. Um, ins but instead of actually going to the graveyards to speak on behalf of the dead, they're going to go to the Fort Missoula and speak on behalf of the dead in a nice little Ken Burns documentary type style. Maybe it could be a lot of kids have a good sense of uh, humor and it would be able to give a nice little uh, interesting spin on our historic figures out of Fort Missoula and ho maybe even out of Missoula as a whole as well. So they'll get to maybe play some dress up and do some cool historic things out of histor Fort Missoula uh, Historic Museum as well. So. Take a look out for that, and of course, if you are interested in finding out more information about my show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So now we made you write it out twice. Um, yeah, oof, so much going on here. When I always have a lot of guests on here, I always tend to have a little more di technical, technical difficulties happening with my system as well. So let's talk about some uh, events that are happening here in the city of Missoula. So starting this morning, um, you got Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Roots Acro Sports Center is all the place to go for your indoor fun, for your kids to do some safe tumbling gymnastic type stuff as well from 9 a.m. to about noon today. Most of this is for like, pre-k walking to f five years really just young kids who are just kidding um basically training with their bodies baby steps to baby gymnastics um book madness at the big sky branch final round of voting so if you like the whole march madness deal but it's spanning over until april then musical public library is the place to be um through Big Sky's high school's uh, March Madness style tournament of books, which wraps up his final round of voting. And you can vote online by going to MissoulaPublicLibrary.org for your favorite books. Um, you can also call the uh, Big Sky branch at 728-2400, extension 8605 for more information about the March Madness book tournament. So celebrate National Bookmobile Day. P Missoula Public Library has the bookmobile stationed at the Missoula Public Library with more than 930 bookmobiles and dedicated bookmobile staff that provided vital library services to the communities for over 100 years. Bookmobiles have delivered information, technology, and resources for lifelong learning to Americans of all walks of life. Missoula Public Library is celebrating National Bookmobile Day by offering an open house aboard the library's Web on Wheels (WW) bus on Wednesday, April 11th. Um, so today, and this is going to be on uh, the public library. Oh, the Public Library at 301 East Main Street. Um, other, you can call them at 721-BOOK, uh, otherwise known as 721-2665. For more details, um, visit MissoulaPublicLibrary.org. And this event happens from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So Art in the Moment, Art Museum. This new program at the Missoula Art Museum provides a friendly art viewing and art making experience for those in the early stages of dementia and their caregivers. Based on the Museum of Modern Art's Meet Me program, Art in the Moment creates a dementia-friendly learning community and provides an opportunity for caregivers and those who with dementia to be together in a creative and relaxed environment. Speaking of a creative and uh, relaxed environment. Tiny Tales at the Missoula Food Bank starts at 10.30 a.m. So go to the, t uh, it's Empower Place, uh, courtesy of Empower Montana and working with, in conjunction with the f of Missoula Food Bank and also um, Missoula Public Library. Um, they host Tiny Tales for kids walking uh, for uh, basically birth to five years of age and just kind of get them experience with some books. Uh, of course, if you're interested in garage sales and used outdoor gear sale, University of Montana at the UC Atrium from 12 to 5 p.m. Um, need some gear for your next adventure but don't want to break the bank, the outdoor program will be having their used outdoor gear sale today from noon to about five in the uc atrium they have gear to sell you can drop off the atrium um of course now if you drop off any gear that you don't want to use you can drop it off and they collect uh 20 percent of what they sell it for um but if they you don't sell anything you get all your stuff back as well clean up and speed up your pc dickens of like learn learn center is if your computer's running slow they can help you speed it up and clear some of the things and um partition some of your drives. Um, making activity at Spectrum Discovery uh, Boat Building. Um, 
Can you build a boat that can survive Brennan's wave on the Clark Fork River water table? Come create a seaworthy vessel out of recycled material to test your watercraft creating skills. And this is going to be at Spectrum Discovery Center just off of their Tool Street right across from Draftworks Brewery. Um, it happens basically at 2 p.m. this afternoon. And Middle School Writers Group at the Missoula Public Library at 3.30 p.m. Um, Missoula International School has been doing a bunch of classes for a bunch of kids, grades K through fifth grade. And this is one of them, animation and robotic design. John Kratz it, um, is back with more projects for your students. Using Scratch programming, your student will develop skills to animate and create. Um, yeah, so Lego Robotics, as they scratch animation software, design and create stories, games, and Innovate inventions. This class will be taught in Spanish. Beginning Spanish speaking students are welcome to join the fun, so just be aware. <laughs> of course, all fees must be paid up front um, or with a deposit. And it, it's nine classes for $155. That's actually pretty good for uh, nine classes. Um, but also, if you want to go join MCAT, MCAT does orientation every Wednesday at 5 30 p.m. It's MCAT orientation here at an MCAT. If you want to learn media and learn some a little bit of television and all the little big mixtures of all sorts of everything and whatnot, MCAT is the place to be if you're looking into getting into media arts. It's a good stepping stone into the next um, way to get everything. So a lot of times, a lot of news stations and whatnot, people are looking for jobs and they're just, I have no experience whatsoever. MCAT, they usually send people to MCAT to get a little bit of experience, but a lot of times it's all do it yourself, but we also help you along the way. So two hour glass fusing orientation at 6 p.m. at Zootown Arts Community Center. You like glass blowing? You want to know what glass blowing is? Zootown Arts Community Center is the place to be for all that fun and everything. Um, get oriented, and they have a glass fusing, and it, you basically it's just like hot glass, and they shape it into nice designs like vases, um, pipes, and all sorts of um, things that, that Missoulians would probably make. Why aid in Haiti hasn't had a greater impact? University of Montana lecture series. Um, Michelle Serre. MSN RN is an international nurse and global health specialist. Um, this is for global health public. Uh, this is global health uh, lecture series. Michelle uh, Serre uh, has 42 years of experience across healthcare discipline in six countries and six states. She is a complex humanitarian emergency specialist, author, and nurse education with emphasis in population health. So she's going to be talking about why aid in Haiti has basically do, ha, hasn't had a greater impact with all that money that was sent there back after the earthquake. So she'll be talking about some of the health problems, some of the cholera that happened in their uh, areas, and some of the uh, health as well, because this is a global public health, and you get to learn about this. So it's a class which is also open to the public to learn more about this, and it starts at 6.30 p.m. at the Gallagher Business Building, room 123. Um, I remember that because I've done that shoot so many times. Not the not the speaker, but global public health. Uh, every man, uh, the origins of a dazzling, humorous, and poignant um, contemporary adaptation uh, harkens back to the 15th century morality play. Every man realizes that when life comes to a close, you are left with your own good deeds, however many or few there may be. And the show uh, runs April 11th through the 14th at 7:30 p.m. Um, also, April 14th and 15th at 2 p.m. So they have some matinees and they'll have the last matinee on Sunday, 2 p.m. And that basically concludes everything that you need to know what's happening for your Wednesday. Um, I do have a couple, I'll go, go over a couple flyovers for your Wednesday night. If you like trivia, uh, Broadway Bar and Grill has trivia starting at 7.30. Um, Karen Lakey's Gibson Hartwell is doing some miscellaneous music at the Roxy. Trivial Beer Suit is going to at night 8.30 at the Press Box. Rocking Karaoke is going to be at the Dark Horse. And Craptastic Karaoke is going to be at the Badlander tonight as well. I do have uh, new dubbing stuff for you guys. So when I come back, I'll finish out your events and wrap up my show. So stay with me. <laughs> hey, Catfella. Y'all talking to me? Yeah, come over here a second. I see you talking. Oh, we'll be right back after. Oh, this transition, I guess. I'm a cat person. I like cats. Do you like cats? Because cats are pretty amazing if you really think about it. Cats, cats. You must like patting yourself on the back. Well, only get the cat hair off my back. I got plenty of other cats. You're welcome to look after all my cats, but you'd have to open the door yourself. I got long-haired cats, short-haired cats, white cats, black cats, brown cats, dog cats, um, cabbies, orange cats, uh, cat blue, all sorts of cats. It's wonderful. See, look, there's a cat right there. It's amazing. Say, you wouldn't want a cat, would you? 
Or I'm looking for a cat that has nothing to do with actual cats. It's more of a slang term from the 1950s. Uh, if you can help me find this one cat. You shut your mouth. I can help find any kind of cat, whether it's a person cat via slang or whatever. There's this cat, there's that cat. Even Cat Baloo. It's a good movie. You should go check it out. Lee Marvin won an Oscar for his dual performance in that movie. It is incredible. And you should be ashamed of yourself for not seeing that kind of movie. I watch any movie that has the word cat in it after all. Even some movies don't exclusively have cats in them. Anyways, what were you trying to ask me? I can find any kind of person you want. I was wondering if you could find a cat that has a chip in it. You just made my job easier. What I meant was live tracking of a cat. Well, only if you can solve how he got in this cage in the first place. Well, you don't have to be a maniac to enjoy dubbing stuff, but you do have to be a maniac to keep on listening to some of these events that are happening here. Family Fun Time at the Y starts tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., so if you're interested in the YMCA and get involved with them, they have some Family Fun Time starting at 9 a.m. Tiny Tales at Missoula Public Library at 10.30 a.m. Today, they usually have it at Empower Place, which is at the Missoula Food Bank, but tomorrow, they're going to have it at Missoula Public Library, where it lives and it belongs. Um, iPads and iPhones, I don't even know why I said it can be anywhere. <laughs> Missoula Public Library, iPad and iPhones, introductory to iPhones and iPods and all sorts of, no, it's iPads and iPhones. There's no such thing as iPods. iPods don't exist anymore. It's kind of pointless. Be more comfortable in their devices. They'll cover basic functions and navigations. Registration is required by calling 721-BOOK. Um, this happens from noon to one tomorrow afternoon. And of course, computer electronics in the maker space. Do you have an interest in, in um, Adreno platforms? Uh, come in and try out this and other electronics platforms during the computer electronics from 3 to 6 p.m. Venomous Hunters. I'm going to give some shout outs to the Missoula Insectarium, uh, MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for more information about them. They are uh, an organization that teaches uh, people all about bugs. So there's a handful of venomous hunters out there, especially in the world of anthropods. As they, as humans, we have no idea what it would be like to capture a, an envenomite prey. Um, but in this day, they'll be trying to their hands on what it takes to be a super speedy venomous centipede. Um, yeah, and it happens from three to five at the Missoula Insectarium. You can find out more information by going to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for upcoming events and more. Um, Missoula Out and About did an episode of it, and if you want to learn more about that, you can go on to MCAT.org to find Missoula Out and About Missoula Insectarium. UM Humanities and Science Annual Dialogue. University of Montana is an Hosts, uh, hosts an annual event sponsored by the University of Montana College of Humanities and Sciences, brings together alumni, faculty, students, scholars, and members of the community to discuss and debate timely topics. Past programs have addressed human nature, public health crisis, and questions of truth. This year's programs on the value of liberal arts education is sure to provide equally uh, provo provocative um, information. Um, gallery Walk and Young Print Shop Tool. Tour. Um, University of Montana, uh, Missoula, uh, Missoula Museum of Arts and Culture presents a gallery walk at the UM Print Shop tour with printmaker and UM professor. Um, and you get to basically check it out. Um, Jim Bailey will host this from 5.15 to 6.30 p.m. They're going to basically go into Paxton Gallery and Fine Arts Building in conjunction with the contemporary Eastern European prints. Recent gifts from J. Scott Patnode. And so all sorts of art and gallery walks. Um, and it's going to start at the MMAC, otherwise known as um, Montana Museum of Art and Culture, starting at 5.15 tomorrow. The future of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. University of Montana Gallagher Business Building Room 123 is not only hosting the Global Public, public Health tonight, but also tomorrow they're doing a... Uh, talking about the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. On December 2015, over 190 countries met in Paris for the 21st meeting of the United Nations Framework Convention in cl on Climate Change, where they succeeded in creating a new world, a new and ambitious international climate agreement. Many uh, have heralded the outcome as a groundbreaking achievement for international diplomacy and global climate action. Others have argued that the climate commitments in the in it are utterly too weak to achieve the agreement's lofty aspirations. The Paris Agreement is now undergoing an unexpected early stress test with the announcement of its intended withdrawal of the United States. 
So the United States is going to withdraw from these uh, Paris agreements on climate change. Um, Dr. Andrew Light will explore the significance of this agreement and why it's worth fighting for at a lecture at the Gallagher Business Building starting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. But if you are interested in more than just a uh, – we're looking at a live uh, stream of a bear. Um, some of the things that are happening tonight is karaoke at the Dark Horse. Mmm, you gotta love more karaoke. You got Sunrise Saloon is some country music. Jacqueline Jolene. Um, Missoula Open Deck Society, a DJ dance party is gonna happen at Old Beck VFW. Everyman, University of Montana again. Cork and Spark live on Daily, which is gonna be Daily Jazz. Apparently, is that a new place? Daily Jazz? I've never heard of that before. Hmm. Daily Jazz, which is at 240 Daily Avenue, corner of Daily and Roland. Let's let's Google Maps this. I, I'm really interested in checking this venue out because I've never seen this before. Do 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 do. So, oh, it looks like it's just a resident. Let's see. Let's let's get a street view. I'm I'm looking at this myself because it looks like it's just gonna. Oh, it's just a it's just a house. Basically, this is a it, it, so it's 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 just like a big house. I don't want to show you the because it's like a private residence, and I'm I'm just like looking at it. It's like okay, well, it's offered, but it's 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 called Daily Jazz, and the Daily is basically I don't know if it's Marcus Daily based on the Daily Copper King of Anaconda, but it's at uh, 210 Daily Avenue. And it's going to be some jazz. So the, it's local jazz, soul, and blues band Cork and Spark for independent for intimate performance. Hence, in, includes why it's like, like a house. Charming neighborhood venue in Missoula's historic university district. It's at 7.30. Show is at 8 p.m. It's $10 cover, limited seating because it's a, it's a home. So, yeah, it's Cork and Spark features a bunch of jazz musicians. So, yeah. Yeah, if you're interested in finding out about that and more, go to MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's going on in Missoula? This is it. This is where you go to find out what's happening in Missoula. Um, but for me, I'm going to probably be exactly what this bear is doing right in this live view from Glacier National Park. Nothing. Look at him. You, you can see his ears like right here. He's not, he's not doing anything. He ain't going to do nothing. And I guarantee that if you're watching this in my replay in this afternoon, that he's basically going to be doing the same thing. Maybe he'll be stretching. Maybe he'll be adjusting. Maybe he'll go on the other side of the stump where his foot is hanging out of the of the spoot hole. So, yeah. So, <laughs> All right, guys. So that kind of concludes everything that you need to know what's happening in and around the city of Missoula. I want to thank my guests for appearing on my show. I got four guests here today. I want to say Claire Mickelson. Kayla uh, Sh uh, um from Empower Montana, and then to talk about Diversity Day, which is happening this Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Missoula Art Museum. And also Lee Fitch and Anna Simple from um, the Missoula Forum for Children and Youth, also Healthy Start Missoula. And y you can check out the state of the child by going to healthy, um, healthystartmissoula.org. And uh, you can find out more information about that. It's going to be at the Doubletree Hotel starting at 6 p.m. with doors open and a dinner for $25 per plate. All donations go to um, organizations to help prevent uh, and um, help children of abuse as well. So you guys can learn more about that by logging online. Missoula uh, Forum for Children and Youth. So. Without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. I will see you Friday for Flagship Friday. Mm -hmm.